Sunday at 521 in the Twin Cities. Eric Nelson with you here until 6 o'clock in the house. With me this hour, Rashini Rajkumar, communications coach. We're getting into uh, all sorts of good stuff. Tabloid fodder, if you will. And <laughs> I know you came in here today, Rashini, and, and you were buzzing about this horse in uh, England. It's an Australian horse, but the race was in England. Black Caviar uh, gets a win yesterday. They call this horse the Wonder from Down Under, probably the most famous Australian horse since the 1930 Melbourne Cup winner, Far Lap. Well, and what's interesting is they're calling it a disappointing win at the Royal Ascot in England. Why was it disappointing, Eric? This horse is the winningest horse, I guess, in history. 21 straight wins. He had the opportunity, and he did, or she, sorry, she had the opportunity for her 22nd win yesterday. But it just, something happened along the way, and here's where... You know, calling a spade a spade is is very admirable. The jockey said, I almost lost the horse, the race, because she usually does so well and is so strong. I pulled back a little, and all of a sudden, other horses started catching up with her. So it was down to a nose, Eric. Luke Nolan is the jockey. Now, the uh, route that this horse took to get from Australia to England, uh, very circuitous, if you will. 11,000 miles was the journey. And Black Caviar wore a specially designed equine compression suit, kind of a little bit out of the mold of what you use to run in. Some Under Armour people Yours, might of course, understand. Is much it. smaller. <laughs> Let me make sure that's on the record. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> but but they, they think this compression suit took a toll on Black Caviar. Now, could that be? Well, you know, I think of, I, I just ran 12 miles this morning. I was wearing a compression <laughs> shirt. And I'm telling you, what it does is it's supposed to compress the muscles. So the muscles are operating pretty much, you know, right up there on all, uh, firing all rockets, right? So to see, and I saw the horse in that compression suit afterward when it was trotting around, and I thought, wow, that's got to be, I mean, that whole body, her whole body. So this is part of what she trains in, and apparently, I mean, she's been doing a great job, but they're disappointed because she was being touted as this amazing, like you say, you know, the wonder from down under, but the win was not the big kind of win that she usually has. All right, the big question is, was it an Under Armour compression suit or Nike? <laughs> you if, know what? That I am not sure. I'll tell you what, if it was, you would know. Uh, they my would guess, have it pasted on there. I'm not there. sure if Under Armour or Nike is doing horse apparel right now, but I'll look into that for But next if there's time. money to be made, they'll get into it. <laughs> After Black Caviar, there's going to be a whole line. First of all, I just love that name, Black Caviar. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. And uh, another topic I saw that, that, that definitely made me think of you, Rashini. This is out of the uh, Los Angeles Times today. Uh, U.S. soccer is now allowing players to bring their children on the road for training and tournaments. And for the past 16 years, U.S. soccer has paid the expenses for both the kids and their nannies. Now, the U.S. Wow. women's soccer team, we're talking about Amy Wambach, Christine Rampone, and other moms on Team USA have been taking advantage of this. So they're able to go wherever they got to go, and the kids come with them. This Your is reaction? really, well, th- I mean, first of all, how progressive is this? I mean, talk about really a good workplace, a work environment, right? Now, I did a little research on just the generic soccer mom, Eric. Not treated as well as these U.S. <laughs> Olympic soccer players. In fact, there was a lot of buzz. I mean, I, I pulled a five-page document from Urban Dictionary on the soccer mom, and people are talking about them as if they are the second coming of Satan. I mean, it's really sad. And I think all that soccer moms want is good things for their kids. But we've seen them. We've seen some of the ones who get nasty, right? Uh, yes, I, I've seen it. At the youth sports level and, you know, hockey, basketball, baseball, football, soccer, what have you. There, there's always going to be that parent. Right. And you don't want to be that parent. Well, my question for you guys is who came first, the soccer mom or the hockey dad? Probably the hockey dad yeah. in Minnesota. Yep. But soccer's big here now. It is. And uh, on the participation level. So it's, it's interesting. And I, I just saw an article recently about the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, Mike Matheny, who a few years ago was coaching a youth baseball team. Uh And he sent a letter to all the parents. And basically the gist of it was, hey, this is not about you. This is about the kid. 
and you are not you are not to say anything, good or bad. You stand there like a mime. Be quiet. <laughs> or I'll clap address when they the do team. Well. Okay. And yes, the umpires are going to make bad calls. They're going to make good calls. You're not going to say anything about it. This is not about you. And how did that work for that team? I don't know how they did, but he's now the manager of the world champion St. Louis Cardinals. Okay, so I'm guessing this is they did a good okay. thing. This is a really good thing. I, I think that is so smart. I applaud that communication strategy. I applaud it because it does get crazy. And you know what? The fact is the kids know, the parents know who are the good players, who are the not so good players. Just let them play. Right? Well, there's no question. You know, and I, I have kids playing baseball and I, I watch them closely and you you have to tell yourself to back off. You know, you see things, you want to tell them things and I, I have. You know, right. I, I definitely have. But I, I think there's a time and a place and you know, look very few of these kids are gonna be the next you know, Joe Maurer. Yeah, and that's Very what they're few. thinking. And if any. Well, yeah. And you talk about the communication strategy, Rashini, and I think that's very interesting because on this, in this particular circumstance, I, it's probably the only way to handle it because you can't, if a parent comes out and is boisterous and unruly, you can't really punt it, you can't kick the kid off the team. Right, and you don't want to make a scene during the game. And you can't do that. So, I, I mean, really, I mean, something to learn here, I think, and I had never heard that story, Eric. I think that's fascinating. But, yeah, I mean, get out in front of it, right? And that's kind of what we're talking about. But communication is the key. you got to say, say something before it happens. Set the rules for how your team will operate. And the coaches are really in a great position to guide everybody and to really, at the beginning of any sports season, say, this is how things operate. And if you have questions, come talk with me separately or give me a call separately. But I think parents really should only be there to cheer everybody on and then to be there when the kid has a bad day for the treat afterward and the trip to Dairy Queen. I mean, that's really the role of the soccer mom or the hockey it, dad. It, 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 you're exactly right. And I will say this in, in the, the the league where my kids play, Brooklyn Park. The coaches are very encouraging. You don't hear negativity or very often you don't hear it. I mean, it, right. it, it's it's upbeat and I can, I can see where there there are now, you know, the the people who run these leagues are that's the mandate. Hey, this is trying to be about fun for the kids and you know, this is not MLB. Right. And, you know, one thing I will say from the time we were in school and in, in elementary and high school, Eric, there was no girls hockey when I was in high school. OK, so that is a wonderful development to see. So now with more and more young people, both b girls and boys in these sports, and there's such a great road for kids to stay away from drugs and to set some pavement um, for for college and to be doing some good things in college in the sports area, maybe scholarships even. I mean, it's now more than ever the time to just support the whole team and not make it about your kid. And, you know, maybe giving those soccer moms and hockey dads a little better rap it, how is that going to happen if they behave themselves? Well, you know why they're so uptight? Why is it's that? the cost of these sports. They have to take out a second mortgage in some cases. I thought you were going to say some Under Armour thing. <laughs> well, uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe yeah, they have to pay uh, for hockey gear. Stuff on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you've got to pay for your kid to play hockey, uh, you better buy lottery tickets. All right, more with Rashini coming up on WCCO.